In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, Amen. What a great blessing uh, this evening to celebrate the Feast of the Presentation of our Lord, and before we begin the Divine Liturgy, to have uh, a, a churchy in the church as well, and to have all of the same hymnography being sung, the same imagery uh, being brought to life right in front of us uh, during the churching uh, for the feast that we have, uh, that we are celebrating this evening, and it's almost as if it'd be great to have a churching every single time we celebrate this feast. We'll see if it ever happens again, but I'm very excited that it happened uh, during uh, this evening service. Uh, because seeing the imagery there, we get to think about what is happening in the presentation of Christ that we are celebrating, as well as what is happening in the churching of a mother and a child when they come here after 40 days. So in the law, it said that uh, after a child was born, after 40 days, the mother uh, would come and bring, as it shows there in the icon there, uh, two turtle doves. Or, or pigeons if they're not able to, to bring that. Uh, that's what it says there in the Gospel of Luke, what we just heard uh, referenced there. But what is going on? Why are they doing that? Well, the scripture says that it's for purification. Now, when we think about purification, we think about something that is dirty, something that is unclean. And sometimes in the scripture, when it talks about purification, it is talking about something that's dirty or unclean, but not in this case, because who are we talking about? Mary, the mother of God, the person who we have just called a number of times over the course of Orthros and the, just this part of the divine liturgy, someone who is all pure, immaculate, all holy. How is she dirty? How is she unclean? Was the act of conception of the word of God something that was sinful? Was her giving birth to Christ sinful? No, absolutely not. It's not a sinful act that she is needing to be purified from that because she is in some way dirty or unclean. Instead, the way of purification that we should understand it in this feast and even with the churching of a mother is more like on the Day of Atonement. When the uh, high priest goes into the Holy of Holies, the one time all year he goes into the Holy of Holies, he makes the offering for the people, and when he leaves from the Holy of Holies, he has to take off his clothes and burn them, because they are too holy to return to normal work. Or think about Moses. When he went up onto the mountain and he was uh, able to speak to God and he was able to uh, receive the law from God. And when he came down from the mountain, it says that when the people went in to see Moses for a time, he had to veil his face because he shone so brightly, because he had been in so close of contact to God. And that's the sort of purification that we are talking about here, recognizing that we live in a fallen and sinful world. And yet, the mother of God was able to participate in an intimate connection and touch of God, perhaps more powerful than any of us could ever imagine. She did the holiest thing possible. She held in her womb the word of God. The fullness of the divinity of the second person of the Trinity dwelt in her womb. That is holiness that is there. And for her to almost return to normal life, she needed to go make this offering and be purified in that way in the temple. And the same is true of the new mother who comes to the church for the first time. And we say these prayers reuniting her to the mysteries of the church, asking that the Lord would bless her to be able to receive the body and blood of Christ not because she has done anything sinful, but because she has participated in the life of God by helping to be a co-creator with him. No other time in the church do we say to anyone, it's okay for you to not be here for the next two months. In fact, St. John Chrysostom said, if you miss three Sundays in a row, you've excommunicated yourself. But with a new mother, we say, take this time. You have participated in a holy act, and when you come back, we will pray for you and receive you into the church because you have done something that is holy and glorious to God because it is uh, continuing that line of creation that our Lord began 
all the way there in the beginning. So that's what's happening with the mother, with Mary at this great feast. What about the baby? Well, in, in the Feast of the Presentation, we call it also the meeting of the Lord. Because it's the time where our Lord met his people in a formal way in the person of Simeon, the old man, who was filled with the Holy Spirit and who himself had been promised that before he died, he would be able to see the Lord's Christ. And so he knows the prophecy. And when he sees Christ, he is able to recognize in him the fulfillment of all of those prophecies. And so our Lord meets his people formally in the arms of Simeon, the righteous old man, that elder. And the same thing can be said for the little infant that is carried into the church. Now, Drew and Sophia were worried. I told them that no baby that I remember carrying has ever wailed during a churching. And she did great, didn't she? You watch the baby's eyes, and it is the best thing ever to hold the baby and, and to carry, carry the child into the holy place because their eyes are just going everywhere. Why? Because they are meeting the Lord. They are meeting the holy place, and they are meeting their salvation in a very particular and real way because this is the throne of God, because there is where our salvation resides. And there is where this infant, this child, is able to meet the Lord and for the first time see the reality of the salvation that is promised even to them, 40 days old baby. And that's what's happening when we bring that child into the temple. Now the last verse of the gospel this morning or this evening says, And the child grew and became strong in spirit, filled with wisdom, and the favor of God was upon him. Now, Lord willing, that is something that over the course of Ivy's rest of her life and for the rest of us who are participating in the church as well, that we grow, we become strong in spirit and we are filled with wisdom and that the favor of God would be upon us. And that's why the churching is a communal act, is something that brings the people of God together to be able to experience it and pray for someone together because it's not just that Ivy will meet the Lord today. But that over the course of the rest of her life, she will grow in, in strength and be filled with the favor of God upon her. And that all of us would help her to encounter God all throughout her life, from the beginning of her life to the end, that it would be surrounded by the presence of God who loves her and has brought her salvation. And it is up to us to continue to remind her and all of us of the promise that is there for us. Because we meet God as well when we step into this building and we partake of our salvation when we partake of the body and blood of Christ. So brothers and sisters on this feast, may we all be purified. May we all work to be holy and to be working fellow workers with God in whatever it is that we do. May we meet and encounter God all throughout our life. And may we see the salvation that has been promised to each of us and that Simeon saw when he held that infant in his arms 40 days after he was born. Blessed feast. Glory to the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. <laughs>